Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante. We're here day two at Edge. This is the Cube, where we extract the signal from the noise. We go out to these events. We find the best guests that are attending these events. We bring them to you and extract the best information we can, package it up for you, our audience. Uh, you can tweet me. I'm at D Vellante. If you have specific questions, you know, please fire away. But um, so this is day two of Edge. Uh, we've been going wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We're going to talk a little bit about flash systems. Mike Kuhn is here. He's the vice president and business line executive of IBM Flash Systems. And we're also joined by Jan Janik, who's uh, also a vice president within IBM Flash Systems, former CTO. Uh, Jan, I believe you did the integration of TMS. Is That's that correct? correct. Yeah, That's good. Correct. So, gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. So, Mike, you and I spent a fair amount of time uh, at the April 11th announcement. Yep. Had a, a very nice there. dinner with some, some, some of your customers. And some great customers came there. Unpacked a lot of the, the information. So you guys made a bold move, got a lot of attention in the marketplace. Mills announced, hey, we're investing a billion dollars in Flash. When Steve Mills does that, you, know, you take notice because he's done that yeah. a couple of other times. So tell me, what's happened since uh, April 11th? Oh, a lot. Uh, a lot of traction building around Flash systems in the marketplace. Um, we had a lot of discussion April 11th, as you remember, uh, in New York City about the strategy and what we're doing there. So over the course of that time, we've built out a lot of uh, client deployments with large clients. Many of them that are here at Edge just talking about their use cases and their deployments and the value and benefit of Flash. Yeah, so what's the shape of that curve? It's not flat, I take it. I mean, oh, much of the industry's flat, but I just presume Flash is kind of up and to the right, is that? It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take off. Uh, quite frankly, every client right now is, is looking at their storage infrastructure. They're looking at their application infrastructure from an end-to-end -end basis, and they're saying, where and how do I deploy Flash? So still a lot of people in the proof of concept phase right now, looking at uh, major, major plays, uh, but uh, we're starting to see a lot of traction in this area. It's definitely taken off. So Jim, when you take us back to the acquisition of, of, of TMS, what, uh, what appealed to you about Texas Memory Systems at the time, and, and how, how did it fit into the IBM profile of acquisitions? You guys are obviously pretty astute acquirer of companies. Why was it such a good fit? Uh, really two reasons. One is the technology that TMS had in Flash was the best we could find. Uh, a very, very deep focus on performance, latency, and, um, and getting the most out of Flash. The second piece, and so they had great technology and a great product, they didn't have a large sales force. So take that technology, add it to the IBM sales force, and uh, it was it was the kind of acquisition that makes sense for us. Yeah, you guys love those kind of acquisitions. Company with not a ton of sales and marketing prowess, and you come in, you do your thing, and then boom. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about uh, how customers are, are de deploying it. Mike, we heard just heard from Karim Abdullah at Sprint mm -hmm. that he's basically putting the TMS behind. Um, uh, uh, S, uh, not an SVC, maybe it is an SVC, a V7000, one of them, to me they're sort of the same mm -hmm. basic virtualization technology. SVC, right. It's an SVC, yeah. yeah. Um, and we talked about, we had Eric Iberg on, we were talking about the 100 microsecond overhead, and Karim did a great job of explaining why, you know, the benefits outweigh that, that limited, you know, performance hit. Um, so, is that the common deployment model that you guys see going forward? Are you trying to build out your own? you know, flash stack, or, or you're trying to maybe target situations where the application is doing some of that uh, storage management, all of the above, talk about that a little bit. So it really is targeting uh, the applications, and it's really an application accelerator. Uh, in terms of the specific use cases, uh, Sprint uh, kind of falls into the category around uh, half of our clients fall into, which is they implement it behind SVC, uh, because they can drop it right into the infrastructure, they can migrate over to this new technology without having to rewrite the applications or change any of the operating procedures around operating copy services and, and compression and things of that sort. Um, other clients, about the other half, are implementing it as just tier zero storage and it's really an application accelerator. So we go in there and we spend some time working with them about where they have latency in their applications and really it drives immediate business value to their business outcomes in terms of uh, end users uh, or people within their, their application owners. Jay, could you talk a little bit about sort of the where we're going to see Flash? Um, you obviously see different deployment models. You see it at PCIe at the server level. You see hybrids. You see all Flash. You, you guys have a, you know an all Flash with you know either an SVC or a direct you know install. Uh, you're seeing Flash in arrays. You guys put Flash inside of DS 8000s and other arrays. How do you see this all shaking out? Are we just going to see this Flash? hierarchy emerge? Are they going to collapse? What's your angle on all this? Uh, excellent question. So our focus is 
uh, on that device to have the, the best optimized flash array for that set of end users. We will then take that device and integrate it either behind SBC or into our DSAK storage, XIV, uh, and take that flash capability, put it on top of the capability of those systems that uh, we already have. PCI cards is an interesting uh, piece of the industry. There's a move to uh, put PCI interface on two and a half inch drives. Um, there will, I believe, always be a place for PCI cards, and I think there's a um, an emerging space which we call uh, in-server flash optimized storage, and uh, and that is very much a PCI card play uh, in servers. In-server flash uh, optimized storage. So I, I, in my head, I'm, I always use the line, the best I.O. is no I.O. So, and IBM obviously has a lot of server expertise. How are you guys working together with your server brethren uh, to affect that, or are you? Or are you guys sort of you know, just focused on crushing it in the marketplace? No, we're working with the server team as well. As a matter of fact, uh, here at Edge, we have uh, Andy Mancha on the Pure Systems team here as well. You're going to start to see our flash array, our design point for that all flash array, be part and integrated into the PureFlex system moving forward. So that's part of the future roadmap that we're starting to share with clients now, get some feedback on the future direction that we have going in that area, and uh, we're getting a lot of interest, a lot of excitement. So how's that work? You're, you're basically a division within IBM, a division, but, uh, but an entity within I, IBM division, so you got, you know, you got targets to hit as well, but you're also feeding other parts of the company with Flash? Is yeah, that right? we're, a new, we're a new business unit with inside IBM System Technology Group, which is our hardware division, as you know. Uh, sit currently under the storage uh, part of the uh, STG area, but certainly we uh, do a lot of collaboration with the entire STG team, as well as the software group team. So you'll see us working with Natiza and, and Tivoli and, and uh, DB2 as well. So how does the whole software-defined thing af affect you guys, Jan? Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Where do you fit in that whole meme? Uh, well, we play very well in software defined. Uh, it, it, is a, it plays both in the in the in server flash play uh, as well as the external SAN attached shared storage. Uh, we will, uh, of course, um, play well with OpenStack and interface into OpenStack to allow uh, other users to add their capabilities and um, and their IP on top of our flash. Yeah, you guys make a lot of contributions to OpenStack. I was just on the GitHub the other day, checking it out. IBM was right up there. HP, obviously, Red Hat, and, and, and some others. SolidFire uh -huh. pops up, you know, a little SolidFire doing some good, good work there. So, um, it's interesting that you guys emphasize open source uh -huh. the way that you do. Um, why is that so important, um, and why does that matter to customers? It's the future of, uh, of, uh, of the industry. It's where everybody's going. It's what they don't, they don't want to be locked into a proprietary system. They want to have an open and collaborative um, architecture. They want to be able to tap in with the innovation of the whole industry. No one vendor can bring all the innovation into uh, into a client's uh, enterprise. So um, open and collaborative is, is where we have been uh, in the past and it's where we're going in the future. So Jim, I wonder if you could talk in vague terms, because I know you can't give specifics, just about the, the futures, direction, where you guys are headed you know, with this technology. So we're on a, a pace to deliver a new product every year. That's about as fast as the uh, flash technology is moving. We need to keep up with that. Uh, we're on a track to double capacity, double performance, improve uh, latencies, and add what we're calling enterprise class uh, capabilities to the um, to the TMS uh, storage. So you're talking about s software capabilities. Is that, is that right or not yes, necessarily? Yes, yes, software capabilities. Okay, so. Why is that important? I mean, why can't I just stick it behind an SVC and use the SVC stack, or just drop it into you know an Oracle environment and let Oracle you know manage the storage management? What opportunities or you know markets are you able to tap by developing your own software? Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, not not everyone uh, is an SVC customer, uh, but uh, everyone needs to be able to. Uh, concurrently maintain their their storage devices or update code without bringing those down. Uh, you can certainly do that behind an SVC, but uh, there are a set of customers who who are um, uh, are not using SVC and they need those same sets of capabilities. So when you think about this notion of software defined, is is SVC not necessarily a prerequisite? Will that are there a couple of vectors there potentially where I'll be able to actually access storage services? Sounds like directly from you know, a, a 
whether it's a flash system or maybe some other IBM storage system. Is that the right way to think about it? That is the right way to think about it. SVC will give you a set of storage capabilities that you may not get uh, as software-defined storage is emerging. Um, metro replication, for example, is probably not something you would get in a software-defined storage solution anytime in the near future, but if you need that capability, you can put it behind SVC and get that kind of capability. Dave, in the same way that you saw SVC sort of integrate within StoreWise, we talked about StoreWise earlier, uh, you're going to see SVC capabilities integrate into flash systems as well in the future. So. Yeah, so, um, so and I can infer from that things like uh, compression, which is going to help with, with costs, obviously. Copy is a, services. Uh, copy services. Yeah, great. All sort of space efficient capabilities that, right. that start to make flash increasingly attractive. Ambuj Gayal just, I think it was Ambuj on the cube yesterday, was saying, if you're running, you know, 15K RPM disks, you know, those days are numbered, and we've been sort of calling that, you know, for a couple of years now, mm -hmm. and uh, so you're starting to see Flash just eat into, it's doing the Pac-Man into the sort of traditional yeah. storage world, isn't it? Okay, so how does that all shake out? Are we, are we gonna see two tiers of storage, like all active data in Flash, and then they get a one-way trip to the to the bit bucket, or are there going to be multiple tiers? Do you guys have opinions on that? Yeah, so, so in the conference, there's a lot of enthusiasm around Flash, obviously, uh, but I don't think anybody from IBM has the point of view that Flash is going to kill off disk. This is not going to go away anytime soon. You guys still sell tape. So we you, still sell tape as well, and people called for that demise years and years ago, right? Um, but if you take a look at the high performance tier of storage, which is about 20, 25% of clients enterprise data centers today, you're going to see Flash start to significantly eat into that part of the marketplace right now. So they will still coexist with uh, high capacity disk, and you're going to start to see um, a lot of advanced tiering that we have today in terms of moving the hot data onto the fastest tier of storage uh, start to exist. Our clients are calling that tier zero storage right now. So you'll see multiple tiers of storage, um, that's the most cost efficient uh, way to go, and uh, Flash is definitely going to take over in that uh, tier zero space. So what are, what are customer discussions uh, going, how are they going? Because, uh, I mean, I, you know, we, like I said, we had Karim Abdullah on, and he's pretty advanced in terms of his, his thinking. A lot of customers either have just putting their toe in the water or haven't even you know, brought Flash in yet. Uh, they have the perception that it's too expensive. You guys are out saying, well, no, actually, there's been an economic tipping point. Take us through a typical customer discussion. Well, actually, the conversation has changed quite a bit in the last several years. A couple years ago, we were having discussions about why Flash, and, and now we're having conversations about where Flash should play, right? So it's changed dramatically. So they're all thinking about this as part of their strategy. Certainly, they have the perception of um, the acquisition cost of Flash is about 2x of high performance disk. So that's the starting point for many in this conversation. But it quickly evolves around what are you trying to do with Flash, what's the deployment case, and what's the end-to-end -end total cost of ownership. And that's where I think we work with you and other analysts on a couple really uh, important pieces of information that we share with clients around. Here's the total end-to-end -to -end cost of computing with Flash and it's driving about a 30, 35% uh, cost improvement. Yeah, it's pretty substantial actually. I know the work that we did uh, really related to, to the extent that you can balance out your system by using Flash. Maybe it's going to cost a little bit more on the storage side, but you're going to save dramatically on, on cores, right. and you're gonna, it's going to have a direct hit on software license costs mm -hmm. and as well maintenance costs. And I was impressed that Steve Mills stood up uh, at April 11th and said, by the way, it's not just Oracle, it's DB2, right. and if we save you guys money because we're running more efficiently, that's a good thing. Exactly. You, know, you guys will do more business with us. You know, that's and you brought up Krim uh, from Sprint a few times. Um, he actually talked about the fact that it drives a substantial reduction in energy costs. Talked about as much as uh, 85, 90%. And uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned on the cube or not when he was talking with you that uh, Sprint was recently recognized as one of the, the best green companies, green data centers in the industry right now. I think the top in the telco space. So they are certainly innovators and certainly on the leading edge and they're certain, certainly making a lot of progress in that area. Yeah, he didn't mention that, but I, I, I'll, I'm reminded of Ed Walsh's keynote. I don't know if you guys saw that. So we, had the, we have a room of 5,000 people. He said, said, everybody stand up. And he goes, okay, you're all a disk drive or a disk array. You're all, spinning and you're throwing off heat and consuming you know, power, et cetera. Uh, and then he had virtually everybody sit down except the guys in the front section. He said, okay, that's what happens when you drop in flash. Yeah, and I was in the front right section. I was yeah. the flash guy standing up. Yeah, yeah, of course, you better <laughs> That's <been>. pretty dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of a good thing, and I don't know how, but, but probably order of magnitude, it's, it's pretty Well, that close, was a so. real life, that was a real life uh, 
demonstration that we had done for a client in one of our flash centers of competency where we had said in a certain application to drive uh, 45,000 credit card transactions per second, you could go from 5,000 spinning disks to you know, like four or five flash systems. So it was order of magnitude uh, improvement. All right, Jan, I got two, two last questions. So Jan, uh, I, wanna, I wanna ask you, you're talking to customers, you know, they're trying to figure out where flash not you know why flash anymore, maybe where and how. What's your advice to those guys? Uh, the advice is uh, go at this with a full, looking at your entire storage infrastructure. Don't go and just put in an 810 or an 820, which you can do and get some fairly dramatic results quickly. This is a journey to migrate your storage architecture from what it's been for a long time to, uh, to what flash can enable you. Okay, and, and Mike Kuhn, um, you said before you don't see you know, Flash, you're not, not under the illusion that it's just going to replace wholesale uh, disk drives, but you're like the Cheshire Cat because you're in, the, you're in a good spot with inside uh, IBM right now. So what's your prediction as to how this whole industry shakes out you know, Flash's impact? What's it going to look like you know, three to five years down, down the road? And what's the impact that Flash is going to have? So right now, uh, just a couple statistics. Uh, flash systems, when you count what we have with the IBM Flash system, as well as Flash SSDs and disk systems, make up about 10% of the high performance disk uh, tier right now in enterprises. I think in the next uh, three to five years, you're going to see that making up the vast majority, over 50%. And, uh, and over time, in the future, I think the, the high performance tier is going to be all flash. Now, those, those metrics, are they, are they revenue based or terabyte based or? Uh, terabyte based. Okay, yeah, and now I guess revenue would even be more substantial because on a Correct. cost per terabyte, of course, it's higher. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're not going to have a faster 15K RPM drive anytime soon, ever, right? Uh, so all the major invention coming out right now with this systems is about high capacity. So that'll still exist, it'll coexist as the, as the uh, tier two, tier, uh, tier three layer, but for the high performance tier, you're going to see that move quickly to, I think, an all flash environment over the next three or five years. Yes, yeah, so you, must, you must be excited. Like I said, you're in the right place in the, in the, in the, in the industry right now. What's, what's next for you guys? You, uh, on to more, you're visiting customers, you got more trade shows, what's, uh, where are you going to be next? We've been, uh, I haven't been, uh, I haven't been home uh, for one week in about the last, uh, since April 11th, since we met, uh, so about two months ago. So we were over in Europe, we are over in Asia, we're talking to clients. Uh, everybody uh, is interested in Flash, there's a lot of uh, enthusiasm obviously behind it but a lot of real hard work that has to go into uh, helping clients deploy it. So. so you're going to go home for a week, is that right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe July Maybe this August? weekend. Yeah. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Mike and Jan, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate your perspectives. Good luck with the uh, continued success of uh, Flash Systems. We'll be watching. Keep it right there, everybody. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest. <laughs>